good old r series here we go again look at this we've got can you hear it backup alarms going off if you can hear it and then around the front buzzers are just going off but the panel but the panel is turned off we just got alarms and stuff going off everywhere the panel won't even turn on it's just it's always something with these i already know what the problem is but let's kind of get in here and take a look at um, what's going on so first thing i got to do is get this cab raised up and i'm gonna get this battery disconnected to get these alarms to go off so we don't have to listen to that while we're working on the machine because that's where the battery is located it's down here in the front of the machine we got to get the cab up to access the battery Well, the first hint that I'll give you is that this is not a real common issue for me because of the climate I live in. I live in a desert. However, for the last two months, it's been raining and snowing every day. It's just really wearing on me as a field service guy. You know, it's just like mud, snow, rain, cold, wind. What is going on? But anyways, so that's our first hint. What we're going to do is we're going to get in here and we're going to start looking for water in these connectors and, and there's a couple spots where water gets in and it just causes all these issues and you know i'm 100 percent bobcat i love these machines great machines but we've been dealing with these water issues in these connectors for a while now and it's it's hard to say why it's like well why can't they fix it or whatever and then you look at it from a technician or even an engineering standpoint and it doesn't make sense how water's getting in there um, unless there's it was in, um, assembled incorrectly or something, and that's what we're going to look for right now. Okay, so I crawl in here, and underneath the back of the cab right here is our cab controller. And this is the first connector that I want to take a look at right here and see if there's any water in there. Actually, there is some dielectric grease on the fitting. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but, and it's, it's kind of around the seal here and it looks like, it doesn't really look like there's any in the pins there. Um, and the reason I point that out is because, well, well, first what I'm gonna do is I'm inspecting the seal here, make sure the seal's not rolled, but I don't see any water in this connector, so I think it's fine. But going back to the dielectric grease, it's like, you know, you would think that's what we want to put on the connectors. That, that's what I like to use. But this um, has grease around the seal. And, and I don't think anybody's been into this machine since it came new from the factory because it would have been me. And this seal does have dielectric grease on it. But I'll read an article. I was just reading an article. And Bobcat does not recommend greasing the seal. They say that um, there's more of a chance that that seal will get dislodged when you disconnect it because it's all slippery or whatever and then it might not get assembled correctly again. Um, but this one has grease on it so it's like it's like they're trying all these different things what works best and what doesn't. Um, you know they say it doesn't hurt to put dielectric grease in the pins but they say dielectric grease can also increase resistance and also cause issues so it's like well do you recommend it or you do you not? Um, I like to use it, but whatever. So that seal looked fine. There was some grease in there. I didn't see any moisture, any water. So next place we're gonna look is our actual hub controller. Now we've got a mid controller, hub controller, and our drive controller uh, back here in the back. Now, what's interesting is the hub controller here has a rubber boot around it. And, uh, I'm not real familiar with, I guess I'm, I haven't seen this boot yet on uh, any of my machines, but it looks like this is a way of trying to protect the hub controller 
uh, from from moisture or dirt or whatever. But you know your hub controller is blue, or purple or whatever you want to call it. I think it's I think it's blue. That to me is a purple color, but um, I see it labeled both ways. So what I'm going to try to do is get under here and see if I can get the connectors undone and see if there's any moisture in those hub controller connectors. Well, that's interesting. I don't see any moisture in either one of those connections. Okay, so maybe this rubber boot is actually helping. So nothing in the cab controller. Nothing in the hub controller. Okay, get that boot back down right. Well, let's check the mid controller. Nope, that connector looks really good too. Seals look good as well. Seals look good in the uh, hub controller as well. Sometimes these electrical issues can be a real, real bear to figure out. So that looked good. Um, I'm gonna try to get all the way back here to our drive controller. Let's check those pins. I don't usually see moisture in the pins of the drive controller. Just because I haven't seen it doesn't mean that's not the issue. Oh, that one looks good. Wow, that one looks good. Okay. Now we have a work group controller up here. I oh, know this thing is slap full of controllers, right? Wow. It's all dry, looks good, seal's not rolled. Crap, what's going on here? Let me put the, so I put the ground back on. I can still hear the alarms going. Um, that's odd, usually it's in this damn cab controller. But it is dry. For the hub controller, so all the controllers are checking out at the moment. Hmm. All right, well, I'm just going to start tearing into connectors until I find something. I just, I feel really strongly that it is a water issue. I just hadn't found it yet, so as soon as I find something, I'll let you know. So I didn't see anything obvious under the cab with any of the controllers. And like I said, I don't, I don't have to deal with the water a lot simply, you know, because of the climate I live in. But I do remember talking to a tech um, when I was in a class that said that he had issues with connectors inside the panel or inside the pillars here. And they would get water inside the connectors in the pillar and uh, would cause intermittent issues like that so i'm going to check that out real quick and see if we see anything in here i think maybe this is where they were talking about because this doesn't have a cap on it uh, it's an optional plug and it was facing up and i guess water could get down in there and cause issues so i'm going to face this one down but no it's it's completely dry everything in this panel is dry but the reason I'm looking in here is because this machine has been of course outside we had a lot of rain here last couple of days and it was just sitting on the trailer and the problem just started overnight you know it was uh, on the trailer 
no issues the day before and then all of a sudden throughout the night you know these alarms started going off after a real heavy rain so I don't know we'll find it we'll find it <clears throat> well, I'm gonna go back underneath I'm just trying to see where You know, see what's wet. Where is water pooling it? Yep, alarm still going off. Well, the backup alarm's not going off anymore, but the cab alarm is still going off. So I'm not having a lot of luck so far seeing any moisture, but just because I don't see it on top or right in the connector doesn't mean there's not moisture down in the connectors. And, you know, I, I, I want to be careful not to get what I call going into a rabbit hole because I'm pretty sure I know where the problem is. But, you know, sometimes we think we know where the problem is and we'll just keep chasing that problem where we think it should be. And it turns out to be something completely different. So... I'm going to play with this a little bit, and then we'll get um, a little more in depth if this doesn't work. I'm going to start with the cab controller, and then I'm going to move down to the hub controller, because, you know, just experience tells me this is where I always see the problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little electrical contact cleaner first, and then I'm going to blow them out. Well, let me blow it first and see if anything... not see any moisture in there but the alarm still going off so that didn't fix it hub controller connections are cleaned out the alarm went off sweet so I used some contact cleaner in that hub connector and like I said although I couldn't see moisture on top usually moisture is down in that connector down in the pins and um, they, they say the water kind of comes up from the bottom it, it kind of comes up through the wires Fuck, I don't I don't know I don't know one article you'll read they can they can't replicate the issue right they put these things in spray down booths and all and 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 um, basically imitate a, the thing being in a hurricane and they, they can't ever get water into it but then when you get out here in the real world this is the kind of stuff that happens so I, I've seen it enough times to know it was either that cab controller or the hub controller and once I cleaned that connector and blew it out of the hub controller, the alarm did go off. So I'm pretty sure that's where our problem was. I'm going to go ahead and get this put back together real quick and fire it up and test it some more. While we're in here, I want to talk about some other um, common issues I see with this fuse block placed right here. 
These machines are notorious for filling up with mud and debris down here in the belly pans. This one's fairly clean because it's kind of an on-road machine. This isn't really an off-road um, earth-moving machine, so I would expect it to stay pretty clean. But what happens is this fuse box will literally get buried under mud, and these fuse or these wiring connections will literally corrode and break off. And I've had a bunch of voltage drop issues that kind of stem back to this fuse block. But while I'm in here, I'm gonna check all these wires and nuts. And uh, you know, every one of these are loose. <laughs> Even the main battery connection is loose. So I'm gonna go through and tighten all those up so we don't have any issues in the future. Yeah, those were really loose. So I guess now I'm just gonna bring the cab back down and put the machine back together and do a quick service on it. But it just goes to show that sometimes electrical issues aren't as straightforward as they seem, you know? It just, if, let's say I wasn't familiar with Bobcat equipment and I went out and looked at this machine as just a mechanic that's never worked on Bobcat, I wouldn't know about those water intrusion issues and, and that moisture can actually cause alarms and stuff to go off. And, you know, that's kind of why I went back to the hub controller a second time because I knew that the backup alarm went off. So something I messed with at first helped a little bit, but that cab alarm was still on and that moisture was just so deep down in that connection that um, it was um, making continuity between a couple of those wires and that's what was keeping the alarm on. So now that we got all that cleaned out and, um, I don't know I don't know what to do really to prevent that um, like I said Bobcat doesn't necessarily recommend using dielectric grease they say if those seals are not rolled in that plug then water should not get up in there but those seals look good and water was in there so go figure huh thanks for watching